In this video, we're going to study beams under axial loading under the umbrella of continuum mechanics. The same assumptions used for the Euler Bernoulli beam are going to be used here. The first is that plane sections perpendicular to the neutral axis before deformation stay plane and perpendicular to the neutral axis after deformation. The second assumption is that the deformations are small. The third assumption is that the beam is linear elastic, isotropic, and Poisson's ratio effects can be ignored. Then, before deformation, any point on the beam will have coordinates x2p in the vertical direction and x1p in the horizontal direction. After deformation, we assume that the cross sections of the beam have moved horizontally with a horizontal function u1, function of the position in the x1 direction, and so the new position, the horizontal position, has increased by u1. So the new position is equal to the old position plus the horizontal component of the new position has increased by a distance u1. The displacement is the new position minus the old position is equal to u1, 0, 0. The strain is the gradient of the displacement plus the gradient of the displacement transpose divided by 2. You get only one non-zero strain component, which is epsilon 1, 1, equal to du1 by dx1. The next step is to look at the equilibrium equation of the beam. So we take a sliver of thickness, delta x1. We look at all the forces acting on it. Using equilibrium of forces, we can reach the equilibrium equation. The forces acting on that sliver are, from the left-hand side, we have a normal force due to the stress sigma on 1. From the right, we have a normal force n plus delta n due to the stress component sigma on 1 plus delta sigma on 1. We also have a distributed horizontal load of p. p is a function of x1. And so on the sliver, we have a horizontal load that's equal to p force per unit volume. The normal force on the right is equal to sigma on 1 multiplied by a, and you can see here we're assuming that sigma on 1 is constant across the whole cross section. The normal force acting on the right hand side is equal to n plus delta n, which is equal to the force multiplied by the area, and is equal to sigma on 1 multiplied by a, plus partial n by partial x1 multiplied by delta x1, which can be written as sigma on 1 a, plus partial sigma on 1 a by partial x1 delta x1. The second force acting on this liver is the force n, which is equal to sigma on 1 a. The third force acting on the sliver is due to the distributed load. And here we assume that the distributed load is given per unit length of the beam. And so the total force is equal to the distributed load multiplied by delta x1. Sum of force is equal to zero leads to f1 minus f2 plus f3 equals 0, from which the differential equation of equilibrium of a beam under axial load is obtained. Partial sigma on 1 a by partial x1 plus the distributed load p is equal to 0. So starting from this differential equation and as using assumption 2 and 3, which is that the beam is linear elastic and the deformations are small, I can replace sigma on 1 with Young's modulus multiplied by epsilon 1, 1, which allows me to replace the stresses with functions of the displacements. And so the differential equation can be written in terms of the displacement. And so by replacing the stress with Young's modulus multiplied by du1 by dx1, we reach this new differential equation in terms of the displacement rather than the stress. If E is constant, I can take E out of the differentiation and then the equation becomes dA by dx1, d1 by dx1, plus ea, the second derivative of u1 with respect to x1, squared plus p. This equation is valid if a is not constant. If I have a cross section that changes according to position, which means area is not constant. If the area is also constant, then the first term here is zero because the rate of change of a with respect to x1 is zero. And then you're left with this equation Ea, the second derivative of u1 with respect to x1 squared, plus p is equal to 0. It's a very easy equation to solve. Usually, you're able to solve u1 if you have two boundary conditions for the displacement. 
We're now going to present an example of a beam under axial load. The cross-sectional area varies. One end is fixed, as you can see, and the other end has a force P acting on that cross-section. The beam has a weight density rho, and so the load per unit length is equal to rho multiplied by the cross-sectional area. The given in the example is that it's a circular cross-sectional area, the radius is equal to two units at the top and is equal to one at the bottom. If I set this point as x1 equals zero and this point as x1 equal L, I reach this equation for the radius. It varies linearly from two when x1 is zero to one when x1 is equal to L. The area is equal to pi multiplied by r squared. Epsilon 1, 1 is equal to the uh, du1 by dx1, sigma 1, 1 is equal to e multiplied by epsilon 1, 1, and the differential equation of equilibrium that applies is the general one when the cross-sectional area changes. And so substituting for a in the equation, we reach to this very long differential equation, and we're looking for the function u1 that would satisfy this differential equation. Two boundary conditions can be used. The first is that the displacement at the top is zero. The second boundary condition is a boundary condition of stress. I know that at the bottom, the stress is equal to the force P divided by the cross-sectional area. Sigma on one is equal to P divided by A. Sigma on one is equal to Young's modulus multiplied by du1 by dx1. So it's equal to P over A. And so this is the other boundary condition in terms of d1 by dx1. This is not a really simple differential equation to solve by hand, so we're going to use the software Mathematica to solve it. Just inputting the differential equation, we reach the displacement. The displacement is equal to negative 12 px1 minus 112 pi rho x1 and so on. So this gives me the displacement at every point along x1. And if you input x1 is equal to zero, you'll get that the displacement is zero because this has to satisfy the differential equation and the boundary conditions. So how to solve this problem in Mathematica? First, we clear all the variables. Then we set the length to be four, the area as a function of x. The area at the end where the force is applied is the area when the variable x is equal to L. Then we use the function D solve, differential equation solve. This is the differential equation of equilibrium. D Ea u prime of x by x, so the differentiation of this term with respect to x plus rho a is equal zero, and we use here double equal. The boundary conditions are the first one is that u of zero is equal to zero, and we here use a double equal sign. And the stress at the far end which is equal to E multiplied by the first derivative of U is equal to P divided by A L, which is the area at the end where X is L. Close the curly brackets. Inside the curly brackets, we put the differential equation and the boundary conditions. Then we are solving for U in terms of X. And then the solution, we store it in the variable U using this formula. U is equal to U of X, the function U of X, after using the solution that has been stored in the variable s.